to moving on? I mean, you know, it's always tough. You know, uh, this is will be my third coach in four years, so um, kind of something I got getting used to. Yeah. Um, but you know, coming to the NBA, uh, you hear people talking about it being the business and. You know, that's what it is. They got to make business decisions, you know, for the organization, for the team, for the players. So um, I guess this is the decision they thought was right for us. Yeah. Were you able to have a conversation with him after the news broke or did you uh, guys no. just all talk? I'll probably just wait, you know, because yeah. he probably have a lot of people trying to talk to him right now. So um, I, I'll just wait and, and talk to him. I know they, you keep saying it's a business. A lot of guys keep saying it's a business, but there's got to be, I don't know, some emotion behind losing a guy that had been your coach for a couple of years and, and really believed in you. I mean, what is kind of, what is it like to lose a, co a coach midseason? I mean, it twice uh, now? it's tough because, you know, you grow a relationship with people, you know, we with the, each other almost every day. So um, just building those relationships, actually getting to know him uh, outside of being a coach, that's the, you know, the biggest thing you always lose is that friendship. But um, it's just something you got to get used to. You know, it's my fourth year. Um, like I said, it's my third coach twice. It happened in the middle of the season, so um, just got to keep playing. Landry said that part of the reason he made this decision was taking a pulse on the team and that Nate's message wasn't uh, getting through to you guys anymore. Do you agree with that? Uh, I won't say I agree, but, you know, sometimes you do need a new voice, you know, just to get things across, you know, clear, a uh, different way. Um, but I wouldn't say his message wasn't getting across. It's just maybe we could, you know, use a, a different message, you know. Accountability was a huge theme throughout yesterday's talks with Clint and DeJounte and John. Just where do you feel like there was kind of a disconnect maybe amongst you guys in terms of finding that accountability amongst each other? I think it starts with us. I think, you know, coaching can only do so much. They can, you know, tell us what to do. They can put the plan into, uh, you know, give us the plan. But, you know, we have to put it into motion and actually work. So. Uh, I think a lot is, of it is on us, uh, and you know, as a team, we have to take that accountability, and, you know, get it right with ourselves before we can, you know, start pointing fingers at coaching or you know anywhere else. After a couple of days of practicing with Coach Barney, do you feel like the plan might be a little bit different with, with him, or do you think it'll be kind of, you know, a lot of the same? Or? Uh, I'm not sure, honestly. Um, <clears throat> we only had two practices. Uh, we'll see tomorrow what the game's going to be like, but. Um, from the practices, you know, coming at, back after break is always more, you know, lighthearted, you know, just trying to get back in the gym, just trying to, you know, get back in game shape and stuff like that. So uh, that's what we were trying to do. And, you know, maybe I'll have an answer for you in a week or two. <laughs> How much were you able to shake the rust off from, from the break to over these last two games or practice, excuse me? I mean, I didn't really have much rust. I was, you know, in the gym, so yeah. I didn't really do much for break. Um, so it wasn't really that hard for me. It's just kind of, you know, getting back into game shape is always different than, you know, working out. Yeah. But uh, that's the biggest thing. Were you able to kind of connect with maybe some of the newer guys and help kind of get them in the fold and, and on the oh, same yeah. game? Yeah, uh, I talked to Sadiq. Uh, I talked to uh, G. Um, you know, they, they like you said, they're new, but they, they play basketball. They've been in the NBA. They know how it works. And, you know, most systems are the same. It might be different name calls for plays and stuff like that. But... Um, most teams run the same stuff, so it just, you know, getting them caught up to speed with our language and, you know, stuff like that. What is the biggest adjustment when you get a new coach in the middle of the season? Just, you know, changing, you know, the, the game plan, I would say. You know, every coach has their, you know, strengths, what they like to do uh, defensively and offensively. Um, so I feel like that's the biggest thing, just changing, you know, whatever they call one play. Um, to, whereas what we call it now, you know, just learning the different language and names and stuff. I feel like that's the toughest part. So just moving forward, just knowing the kind of personnel that's on the team, not necessarily thinking of anybody specific, but what kind of coach do you think this team needs moving forward? Me. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, I have no idea. Um, I couldn't tell you. Uh, like I said, I'm only, I'm still on my rookie deal technically, so uh, I, I couldn't tell you what kind of coach we need, but you know, like I said, it's on it's on us. We have to produce on the floor. Like I said before, we start talking about coaching and, and everything else. Have you seen any of your teammates maybe step up during this time and, and kind of try to bring you guys together? It's not just on the coaches, on you guys. So maybe who's trying to, to bring you guys together during this time? Uh, it's all of us. You know, uh, we we all know what happened. You know, coach getting fired is not it's not all on him. Like I said, I don't know how many you know how many times I can express that, but 
it's a lot on us. You know, we weren't producing on the floor. You know, we have a under 500 record. Coaching can only do so much. So it's on us to for these next 23 games. I think we have to to produce, and we have to.